bindings. Uh, similar to the vision module, the perspective module uses bindings. And this allows you to basically bind properties of components to different sources of data. And that can be tags, it can be calculations, it can be queries, it can be rest bindings. Uh, there's a lot of uh, different binding types that perspective brings to the table. By default, these bindings are unidirectional, uh, but certain bindings allow you to be bidirectional. Where, for example, the tag and property, you can be bidirectional where you can write back to that source uh, target. So it could be back to that tag or back to that property. Um, so bindings are fundamentally one of the most important concepts inside of uh, division or perspective, especially with perspective, and uh, offers a lot that you uh, and, and how you can make these components come to life. So if we look at an example here, uh, I've got one with different kinds of bindings set up. It's really best to kind of show these things in the designer. So let me go over here to the bindings um, screen. And I got this gauge up here as a property of the value and any property can be linked. I have this one though bound to a tag directly. Perfect, that allows me to, to see that value and it changes, updates that property. If I made it bidirectional for a control, I can write back if it was like a button or something like that. The one over here, this is actually using indirect tag binding where we're indirectly pointing to a tag based on the dropdown that's right above it. So whatever motor uh, that's, that's selected is the motor I'm gonna look at. So if I you know, play around, if I go to motor two, I'm now seeing motor two. If I go to three, I'm now seeing three. Uh, and so I can actually change which tag I'm looking at by the indirect binding. This one over here is actually linked to a property. So I'm binding uh, the actual tank value to the slider that's on here. So if I'm in the run mode, I can actually move my slider and you can see that tank go up. Um, so property bindings are important. Um, this is uh, kind of a silly example, but it shows how that works. The last one has, um, or the next one over here, this middle one, is actually going to an uh, expression. This is where we can do a lot of really cool things uh, with the expressions. We'll talk you know, more uh, about this in, in particular, um, but we can use various uh, functions and operators to, to go further with this. And so here I'm basically just getting, taking that, that tank I'm doing number format, I'm multiplying by 100, formatting that number with two decimal places, adding uh, text around it, level, and then the feet, and then I've got that full label right here that has the information. And the last one here is a, is a time series chart, and that's bound to tag history. So I can bring back history from the historian and see that data on the chart. But essentially, we're all the same things. We can take any properties we have and we can bind those to some source of data, and uh, it gives us a lot of flexibility. Now. Kind of going on from that concept, we have the notion of transforms. And these are incredibly powerful. And this is unique to perspective. And they give you the ability to alter a value from that binding. Um, if you envision, if you wanted to alter those values, you often had to bring back them in custom properties, add additional you know, custom properties, or use scripting. Here, we can do it all right within the binding itself. So as an example, we can take uh, a value that comes back from a tag binding, and we can alter it and transform that to, say, a color. Uh, or you know, we can format that or we can apply any kind of transform we want to that data. And we can have lots of these transforms that will, that will execute from top to bottom. There are four different types that we have, map, format, script, and expression. Let's go through each one of those. A map transform allows you to map an input value to an output value. So typically from a number to a color uh, is a good example, but we can go from anything to anything. There's a lot of options that this particular hat transform has. Um, as you can see, you specify the input type and the output type. And uh, you could, you know, just can, and configure it. So it's a really great one that you can work with, and uh, that is often one that we use with, uh, you know, like HMIs where we color those components. Formatting transforms uh, allow you to format a value that's returned from the binding. So I can format a number, for example, uh, with like two decimal places. I can format a date uh, in a particular style. Uh, it allows me to, to do that format. Script transforms are are really awesome where you can run Python scripting right within the binding itself. So I can I can transform that using scripting, maybe using a ca calculation or using some algorithm that we want to work with. And then lastly is expression uh, transform, which allows me to, there's an expression binding, but there's also the expression transform where I can take a, the value that we're originally linking to and then apply a calculation to that within those functions. Uh, and, we, and we can have as many, we can use all these transforms in, in one binding or uh, you know just one of them, it's totally up to you. And they, they run that sequential order, as you can see, uh, they would go from the value, the original binding to then the transform. If you had multiple transforms, you'd see each of those steps to get the ultimate result that then comes back on the component. So uh, quite powerful there to be able to use those. So if you take a quick demonstration uh, of this, we have another screen here that looks at transforms and there's a couple different transforms we have. 
Um, so again, the best way to look at this is in the designer. So I'm gonna go over here to transforms. So here I've got one that is a, is a number to a color. So if I look at this, this paint, I'm going from a tag and then from a number here to a color. Uh, real simple uh, for that. This, this next one here is where I'm taking a, a tag and then I'm actually formatting it with two decimal places. Um, so now I have nice two decimal place format. This next one is a date. So I'm actually taking a date and I'm, I'm a applying a format pattern so I can see it more as a human readable string there uh, that I want that to be. This one here is actually doing a, uh, taking by into a tag, but then doing a conversion. So maybe I'm doing Celsius to Fahrenheit uh, right here. I can do that with an expression binding or expression transform. And then lastly is the, the good example of the script transform. Here I've got this data, this table, the data property is bound to a query or history or rest binding or data somewhere else. And then I can manipulate that. In this particular case, what I'm doing is I am looking to see if the, the population value, if that's greater than a million, if so, I'm then gonna add a style to it to, uh, to basically uh, apply a background color. So as you can see, all the ones now, all these cities that are orange have a population that's greater than a million. Um, so great ways to be able to manipulate that because that gets us in, it allows us to get the data into a shape that we want on the property that's there. Again, any property, we can link to any of these bindings and use any of these transforms. Okay, so next thing is in perspective, we have events and actions. Uh, it's some of the fundamental building blocks for, you know, for project functionality. So there are a wide range of events that you can define within your project. I'm gonna highlight some of the common ones you use. Um, I recommend visiting our user manual to get more details on all these different events. Uh, but they can be configured on any components. And some of the components have special events, such as tables, uh, file upload component, view canvas, signature pad. And basically, these events allow us to respond to things that happen on the component. So maybe it could be a mouse click. It could be a keyboard event, uh, like, a, like pressing a key or releasing a key. It could be touch events or wheel events. Uh, for example, the, the file upload component has an uploaded file event. Uh, that is special. And so the events allow us to, to respond to that. And we can respond to that with an action. An action is uh, so what you do with that event. So as an example, I might have an on-click event that I open a pop-up, or I might have an on-click event that's gonna scan a barcode, and uh, I can certainly work with those. And so I've got a, a good demo of this um, as well. This one I can stay in the runtime. I've got here on the button, I've got an on-action performed event that said the button was pressed. I've got one that a button where I open a pop-up, so I've now got a pop-up uh, there. I've got one where if I put my mouse over it, um, you know, it would actually have a mouse enter and a mouse exit. Now I'm in a mode where it's, the mouse events are not there, it, only the touch events are there. Um, so let me um, let me go out of this just for a quick moment. And so I'm in here. So if I can see a mouse enter, mouse leave uh, for those. So let me go back into again, the dev. Uh, and then I've got like the ability to upload a file. So let's say, uh, say I take, you know, a file here, um, you know, any, of, any, any file, let's just uh, get, you know, this one here. Uh, that was a little bit bigger. Uh, let me find a different, smaller file. Got lots of different things. Uh, so let's say uh, that one, I've uploaded that file, file was received. That's a special uh, event that's there. 